Okay, in this episode we're going to look at uh, creating a dash mechanic. I wasn't quite sure which type of mechanic to use. I'm personally not very good with animations or particles. So I've settled for the method that Barden used, which is the dash after image. So a shout out to at Barden uh, for creating the tutorial. And we're basically going to follow his after image tutorial now. So we want to go into our modules folder create a new folder called dash and in here we want three scripts uh, we want the dash script dash after image And the final one we want to create a be an object pooling script. So we call that object pool. Okay, I'll well, have to change that when we open the script up. Okay, so we open the object pool script up in a Visual Studio and just rename that where I spelt it wrong and I'll cut that out and get rid of the namespace okay so we want some variables for our object pool okay so let me zoom in a little bit for you so we've got a serialized field for a game object of the prefab that we want to instantiate and pull. We've got an int for the number of pulled objects. Then we're going to have a queue of game objects to store the pulled objects in. And then we're going to make a static instance of this. So when our prefab spawns, it'll find this instance without us having to worry about anything. Okay, so... We want an awake function. So we clear some space here and we put an our, our awake in here. Awake in, in here. Okay, so we paste that in and that's just creating a static instance of itself. And then we're going to create a object pool method called create pool. So we don't need those. So we can delete those. And now we start with the create object pool uh, method. Okay, so this is the create pool method. We're going to loop through uh, the max pooled objects. And for each object, we're going to instantiate the prefab. We're then going to set its transform and then we're going to add it to the object pool. So now let's create the object pool function. Okay, what this simply does is it takes a game object that we're passing it, sets it to active, uh, inactive, sorry, and then we'll add it to our queue. So that's all we need for that. Now we need a method to get an object from the pool. So we'll just get that now. Okay, this is the method to get from the pool. What we're going to do is we're going to check the amount of pulled objects and if it equals zero we're going to create some more and then what it's going to do is grab a pulled object from the queue dequeue it and set it to active and then return it so when we call this function it will return the game object that's all we need for the object pull so we can now go into unity Create an empty object, reset its transform, call it object pool. And we can then add our object pool script to it. So now we need to create the after image prefab. 
So if you open up the dash after a ridge script, once again I'll get rid of my namespacing. Okay, and we start with the variables that we need. Once again, there's quite a few of these, so we start at the top. We've got a float for the active time for the image, so how long we want the image to be active. We've got our initial alpha. We've got a float for our alpha multiplier. This is what we're going to multiply the alpha by to decrease it. We've got a float for a timer. We've got a float to set our alpha value. And we want to grab the player's transform. We need a sprite renderer. And we want to grab the player's sprite renderer as well. And finally we've got a colour that we're going to use to decrease the alpha. So we're going to get the player's sprite renderer. And we're going to attach a sprite renderer to this script. Okay, so they're the variables. So if I just zoom out one, hopefully you can see all of those clearly. You can copy those out. Okay, we don't want to start, but we're going to use on enable. So we get rid of the start method and replace it with on, a, on enable. Okay, we're going to get the player controller and we're going to use game object, find object with tag player and grab its transform. We're going to get the sprite renderer attached to this script. We also want to get the sprite renderer attached to the player. So that's player controller, get component in children. Because the player sprite is a child of the player game object. We're going to set the initial alpha value to 1, which is what set alpha is. Then we're going to set the sprite renderer to the player sprite renderer. So that would be the sprite, sprite renderer that this script is attached to. Then we're going to set the transform position and the transform rotation to the player's position and rotation. Then we're going to activate the timer. Then we need to jump into our update function. And what we're going to do is multiply the alpha by the alpha multiplier. Uh, set its new colour to 1, 1, 1 and then that alpha value. We're then going to set the sprite renderer's colour to the new colour that we've created at the top here. This colour. And then we're going to check if the time.time .time is greater than time activated plus active time. So that's going to basically check how long the object's been alive for. And if it's been alive for longer than uh, the time specified, we're going to basically just add the object back into the object pool. And that should be it for the after image script. So I'll just keep that there for a second so you can pause the video and copy that. There's the update. There's the on enable. And there's the variables. Okay, so we can now save that, jump back up into Unity, create another empty object, and we want to add a sprite renderer, and we'll add our dash after image effect to it, and then we want to make a prefab of that, so we call this after image and drag that into our prefabs folder we can now delete that and then we'll assign that after image into the object pool right that should be our basic visual effects set up so i will cut this lesson short here and in the next episode we'll look at creating a dash script so once again, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, give us a thumbs up, come join us in Discord, and I'll see you in the next video.